Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroughtonFeather.com and in this two minute tying video I'm going to show you a really special fly called the Mercury Cased Caddis. Stay tuned. Let's start tying this fly, which is a mercury cased caddis. In my Stonfo Cayman vise, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. This is their S402BL. It's a nymph hook that I use for so many patterns out there. It's a really great hook. The BL designation means that it's barbless. I tie this fly anywhere between sizes 10, the whole way down to a 16, sometimes an 18, with 14 being the most common size that I tie. In fact, that's what I'm tying today. I've already added a bead to this hook, as you can see, and you can use either glass or plastic beads. There's a brand out there called Killer Caddis Beads, and they have this mercury look to them. It looks like there's mercury inside of the bead, and it has just a great look to it. If you can't find those beads specifically, you can actually go to your everyday craft store, um, buy some plastic beads, and they have that same mercury look to them. In fact, that's what I'm using today. I don't have any more of the Killer Caddis beads left. If you don't have those beads, you can also use just a regular silver tungsten bead. It works really well, though I just prefer this look a little bit, a little bit more, plus it's also recommended in the tying of the pattern. I've already added a lead wire body. The size is 0 .010. I've made around 10 to 12 wraps of that. And then next, I'm going to start with my thread. I'm going to be using size dot brown uni thread, and this is a really important step. I'm going to leave the tag long, so basically I'm just going to tie this thread in and I'm not going to worry about that tag in. I don't want to do anything with it because I'm going to be using that for the ribbing of this fly. Next what I want to do is just kind of jump my thread over the lead wire. So I've now locked it onto both sides of that lead wire and I want to just kind of make a transition point at the, the front of it and at the back of that lead wire. So just build it up a little bit so it's easy for my material to to get up and down from that. I want to cover it as much as possible. You don't have to go too crazy here. Sometimes I feel like I'm taking more time covering the lead wire than actually tying this fly because it's such a, a simple fly to tie. Once you have it relatively covered, I'm just going to bring my thread to about the spot where the barb would be on the hook. I'm going to grab my main fly tying material for this fly, and that's a turkey tail feather. You can see I've used this one a few times so far. I want to kind of stay away from the tips. I don't, I don't need any of this lighter stuff. I really want to get the, the fibers that have some really decent modeling. I'm going to pull out around six or eight fibers. Trim those away from the, the actual feather. And then you're now looking at the tips. I'm just going to trim the tips because they tend to be really just, uh, they're really easy to, to tear or break that, that side of the, the feather, that side of the fiber. I'm still going to tie them in by the tip side, though I've removed the tips. I'm just going to place that, those uh, excess fibers kind of over the, the front. I'm not going to worry about cutting those off. I'm just going to wrap just right over them. Bring my brown thread the whole way up to the bead. Then for these, I'm just going to wrap them in. And you're going to see that they are just going to give a great modeling. And they're going to look really just wonderful. Once I get up to the bead, I'm just going to lock those in place. Sometimes when you're locking them in place, you'll, you'll notice that a few of them might actually break, which is one of the main reasons why I like to leave that, that brown thread back there. So this brown thread, I'm actually going to counter wrap this because I want it to, number one, just create a little bit of ribbing, though ribbing is really not, not essential. I don't even know if it's relevant whenever we're talking about a cased caddis. However, when we're using this material, I want to secure the material. I want to make sure that this material is not going to break when it's on the stream, whenever a trout bites it. I'm just going to counter rib that, get it the whole way up to my brown thread. Place a couple locking wraps. Get rid of it. And then just kind of bind this front area down a little bit. Extend the thread. And I'm going to immediately go to a whip finish. And get that thread out of there. Now we're not finished with the fly yet. I'm just finished with the brown thread. Next, I'm going to grab some chartreuse thread. This is going to be representing the caddis coming out of the casing. I'm going to tie it in directly behind that bead. If you notice, I'm just pushing that bead forward. Then I'm going to wrap back. 
And I just want to keep going back and forth until I've built up a small section that you can really start to see. Once you start to see it and it looks like it's relatively even the whole way around, which is basically right now, you can immediately go into your whip finish and complete this fly. So I'm just going to put a few in real quick. And then before I go any further, I'm just going to grab a little bit of uh, Sally Hansen Hard as Nails. It should not be this color, and I have a funny story about that, though I'm not going to share it today. I'm just going to place a little bit of, of that on the thread to help secure it. Go with one more whip finish. and trim my thread away. So now we have a finished look at this Mercury Case Caddis. This is a really simple fly to tie. Adding that ribbing really helps to secure the fly and it just looks awesome in the water and in the vise. This is one of those flies that I believe catches both fishermen and fish, which is a really great thing. Just so you have an idea of what this looks like without these bright lights on, let me turn those off for a second. This is what the fly looks like, just in natural lighting. Sometimes I wonder if my fly tying lights will kind of drown out any of the colors. Let me turn these back on now. And there is one more look at the finished Mercury Cased Caddis. I'm now just going to switch the camera angle and tell you a little bit more about this great pattern. Now that I'm finished tying this Mercury Cased Caddis, you can see why I chose to add it to my two minute tying series of flies. All the flies in that series are those that I vaguely classify as guide flies. Basically patterns that can be tied in a short amount of time, but more importantly, are effective when it comes to catching trout. This is one that easily falls into that category. To tell you a little bit more about this pattern, it was developed by Pat Dorsey as part of his Mercury series of flies. It's a great series of patterns that I recommend you checking out. Though this is one that I was drawn to because I know we have so many cased caddis flies in the waters of western and central Pennsylvania, areas that I primarily fish. I was fortunate enough to also see this tied in person by David Klossmeyer, a great tire who was doing a little tying demo at the Somerset, New Jersey fly fishing show. David made this pattern look just so absurdly easy, and I knew that I had to get some of these in my box. It's basically a pattern that if you lose a couple while you're nymphing, you don't feel too guilty because you know you can just crank out another half dozen when you get home. There are a couple things that drew me instantly to this pattern. For starters, that killer caddis bead at the front just makes this fly look incredible. Plus, that chartreuse thread behind it really just does a great job of representing that caddis as it comes out of its case. Now, whenever I saw David tie it, I realized that I could also modify, modify this fly just a little bit. For instance, different than my version of this pattern, when David ties this one, he uses nothing but chartreuse thread the whole way to, to the finish. And then he goes back and he puts head cement over the body of the fly to really just protect it to make sure it's not going to come apart. Whenever I tie a lot of my flies, I tend to over-engineer over them. And if you notice on this pattern, whenever I was tying, I started with brown thread. And then once I came back through, I had counter wrapped it with the edge, basically the tag end of my thread. I really wanted to find a way to protect that without adding any additional wire or anything. And I really didn't feel comfortable using any head cement or varnish over the body of the pattern. I was then easily able to just tie off this thread and then transition into a chartreuse color instead, or basically to finish off the fly. And it works out really well as long as you have both a brown and a chartreuse thread that are spooled already so you don't have to take a lot of time during the actual tying of this pattern. The other thing that I want to point out to you is that um, in the original pattern, Pat recommends using these killer caddis beads. They're glass beads that work really well. If you don't have those out there, don't worry about going out to buy that specific bead that has that little mercury looking um, piece inside of it. You can go to your everyday craft store and you can buy beads that look basically exactly the same. In fact, the ones that I used on this video were those that I found at a local craft store because I didn't have any more of those glass killer beads left. So keep that in mind. You don't have to always go out and buy that fly tying material that's recommended. Whenever I fish this pattern, I tend to fish it uh, with 3X or 4X monofilament. And then from there, if you're allowed to fish 
th up to three flies in your waters, what I'll typically do is hang a little nymph off the bend of the hook around 20 inches back, normally like a small, uh, maybe a size 20 WD-40 or a small pheasant tail, something like that. And then if the fish tend to be flashing in the water, I'll also have a soft tackle about a foot and a half up my leader, just so I know I'm really covering all my bases. This mercury case caddis is a fly that I tend to run right on the bottom of the stream, and it works really well there. I know that you're going to have success with this fly, and I hope you enjoyed the tying of it. Well, with all that said, I do have to thank Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their hook. You can find their hook and many more at their website, which is allenflyfishing.com. As always, thanks for watching this YouTube fly tying tutorial vi video of mine. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments section or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you'd enjoy this fly tying tutorial, I have many more at my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page and I'd appreciate it if you like that. Well, as always, thank you everybody for all the positive comments and I really do hope that you enjoyed the tying of this pattern, the mercury cased caddis.